I was watching Men in Black when I was four. I remember distinctly, I was sitting on the floor in my parents' living room and something clicked when I saw Will and I was like, I can do that. I always knew that this was it. I was always clear that this was going to be it and I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. My childhood still is fairly normal. My parents treated acting as if it was an extracurricular activity. And while I was going to school and then after school, I would go to auditions. There happened to be a woman who went to one of my aunt's churches who was an actress. And she was like, you know, here's my manager. They're looking for kids. And I went in for them and they picked me up immediately. Um, and I started working pretty quickly after that. But I think Sesame Street was I think the first like actual TV gig and that's how it got started. Oh, hi there, everybody. I'm Ernie and this is my friend Tyler. When we shot the Kwanzaa segment, a lot of this is a lot of my family and my extended family at that. My father's like carrying my baby brother around. He was booked for that before he was born. So like my baby brother came out under contract. <laughs> like, I just don't think we were aware of how big the representation conversation was going to get and how people were so starved for content that, you know, represented them and what their families looked like. And it's kind of, you know, now our family business. There was a lot of conversation um, at home about how we showed up when we were on camera, that we had an opportunity, particularly as Black men, to represent Black men everywhere who looked like us. And how we showed up was important. We have an opportunity to show people sides of things and realities that they wouldn't have normally seen in a way where they can kind of, you know, digest it easily and also fall in love with it. When Everybody Hates Chris started, I really felt it. This character in this time frame could have been any New York kid walking down the block in the early 2000s. What am I gonna do? This is a disaster. Dude, pull yourself together. Everything's gonna be all right. Really? No, you're totally gonna fail the 10th grade. I wanted to make sure that I never made those that I was here to represent and play a role for look bad. So for Everybody Hates Chris, an audition came down for this story about Chris Rock's life. And I was on my way into the city to go read for it. And then they called me to tell me that the audition was canceled. And then a year later, it came back. I read six times. And that was the first time I like really understood what it took to like go get it. Like you, if you want this, you have to be able to deliver take after take, you know, and I think to this day, it's still how I work. So the the usual um, rule of thumb is when you come out to do a screen test, if they book you a plane ticket home, you know what that means. I was on the plane and before my mother can turn her phone off, my manager called. He got, he, he got it, get off the plane. So they were like, no, <laughs> you're not getting off the plane. <laughs> so I still had to fly back home <laughs> just to turn around and come back. They put my face on literally every bus in New York City, like literally every single one. I was just one of the faces in this crowd beating the block like everybody else one day. And now, yeah, they know exactly who I am, whether they want to or not. In some aspects, it was it was kind of traumatic in the sense of like, I just wasn't used to that many eyeballs. And at 12, you just feel that as you're walking through a crowd. Like, okay, so everybody I've ever seen my entire life in the 12 years of my existence has seen this and like knows my face in this city. But there was also something about it that prepared me for what was to come. I would say my teens were where it, it, it really started to change. I had to really decide what kind of actor I wanted to be. And I was like 17. And that's when I learned, never take the roles that you're offered. Only take the ones you gotta fight for. Never, never. Because the ones that you're offered are gonna keep you in the box. There's a lot of noise, particularly around child actors. So everyone's saying, you should do this, or you should do that. I, I wanted to represent people who looked like me, to tell stories of, you know, the average black male experience with like supreme amounts of empathy and um, emotional range. And I didn't want to be an actor who made a lot of money, but didn't do any work that actually moved the needle societally. There's been a narrative that black men were not able to control of the deadbeat dad, of somebody who wasn't, you know, concerned about the rearing of the next generation. And I'm like, that's a stereotype that was put on us. So when I saw Gregory, I saw this opportunity to show the heart of a black man for his next generation, to see how it pulls on his heartstrings. 
Just got this today. You're full time? Yeah, but this is a special place. And you helped me realize that, so thank you. You know, I think something that people miss nowadays is that actual change and progress takes time. It takes time and consistency. And I think comedy is a great way to do that because you're not beating somebody over the head with your point. You're getting them to laugh, which brings them down and it allows them to actually feel something because it disarms people. But that's, that's for sure what I'm here to do. I'm looking for the thing that's not being talked about and particularly for black men. We have this opportunity to use our own voices now and craft our own narratives. So that to me seems safer for the next generation of actors who just happen to be children.